Hey, what's going on everyone? It's Sean from All Things EV and man, we're a day away, a little less than 24 hours away from Tesla's shareholder meeting and battery day and I've been chomping at the bit to make one last video before the big news and announcement just to give some additional thoughts. There's been some new news that's come out around Tesla's battery packs, batteries, patents around them. And to me, they are some pretty substantial innovations that I wanna highlight and just give my two cents on. I just wanna say up front that this is not going to be a, a super technical video. If you want technical video on, on what I'm about to talk about, go take a look at the limiting factors video. I thought it was really, really good and uh, far more detail that I'm going to dive in. I wanna cover what this means from a, from a business perspective, a little bit more higher level, and, and share a little bit about my perspective based on what I know about Maxwell and some of my behind the scenes conversations with people who know Maxwell pretty intimately. So the first thing I'll cover is Fred Lambert's electric leak on the size of this battery cell. And if this is true, which I do believe it is, this cell is more than 2x the size of the 2170 cell, which would be this one right here. Here's a, here's a look at the 18650. You can see the size difference, but the size of this new battery is significantly larger. To me, this is the first time that I know of that an automaker will be using battery cells this size. As I understand it, CATL does make an LFP battery this size or around this form factor size. I haven't been able to locate any schematics of it. I wanted to do some sort of comparison between what Fred Lambert leaked and what CATL makes on the LFP side. If I can find that battery form factor from CATL, I'll certainly add it post recording, but I just wanna make a mental note of that, that I did speak with someone who did confirm with me that CATL does make a battery around this size. Do I think that CATL and Tesla are working hand in hand on this? Probably not. My guess is that the innovations with this battery that Tesla is working on supersedes or exceeds whatever CATL has done. The other thing that I'll mention is this patent that Tesla was granted in May of 2020 that they originally filed on November 4th, and it has to do with a cell with a tabless electrode. Now, as I mentioned before, I'm not going to go into technical detail about that. I think that the limiting factor does a far better job than I could explaining that, but my understanding of this is that it makes it quite a bit easier to manufacture the cell and the pack. And what I find really interesting about this new battery, and this is a little bit of a hat tip to be R. Cooper for a fantastic analysis and uh, for finding some of these some of these patent diagrams. It appears like this tabless cell drops into a casing or a holder, allowing for quick manufacturing process. So not only does there appear to be some innovation around the actual individual cell, but there also appears to be some innovation around the manufacturing of the entire battery pack. If these are indeed larger cells, more than 2X the 21700, it does indicate that Tesla is going to need less cells to produce a battery pack. And this ties into something that Elon Musk mentioned on the Third Row podcast interview, how he says that the modules really aren't needed anymore. So it's possible that what Elon had in mind when he was talking about this were these larger cells that take up more room and require less manufacturing time. They're going to be less complex to produce and won't require for individual cells to be grouped into modules. It will just be these larger cells in a battery pack. After considering a little bit of the technical limitations with these larger cells around cooling, Tesla will likely have some innovations around how they're improving the coolant and the battery management system in these new packs. And I'd like to pose this as a question to those that are watching, how will Tesla do this, do you think? They will have to redesign this because it is a thicker cell and it will require more ingenuity around managing that battery pack temperature and those cells associated with the pack. 
If we consider some of the things that Elon said today regarding Battery Day and the gradual ramp up of batteries and battery cell production, it's safe to assume that the production of these new batteries will be in very low volume. Now, what cars fit into low volume and make sense from a financial perspective, I have long said that I think that these new batteries that Tesla is working on are going to go into the Model S and X. Now, does this mean that they're going to refresh the entire car or make some changes or updates to exterior design or interior cabin? I don't know, but for me, it seems to make sense that if they want to start producing a new vehicle, they want to start adding these battery cells into vehicles as soon as possible. I'm gonna to guess to say that it is Model S and X that are going to get these new batteries so that they can start selling them at a higher profit margin and higher purchase price. And yes, Model S and X have seen a significant drop in sales volume over the last three years, which coincides with their ramp up of Model 3 and Model Y. So how can Tesla reinvigorate sales of their Model S and X, which I do think they still care about, I think it's going to be with this new battery pack and potentially slight redesign or update of the Model S and X exterior and interior. And everything that I've talked about so far is not to ignore some of the really interesting juicy details around Tesla acquiring Maxwell and high bar and the million mile battery. These could be things that we hear about tomorrow on battery day. However, I don't think that we'll see the full extent of some of these acquisitions for another six to 12 to 24 months. Does the dry battery electro technology from Maxwell get implemented into these new larger form factors that were leaked on electric? My guess is probably it does make a lot of sense and there may be some additional magic that no one has thought of, that no one knows about, that will wow us and surprise us. I can see High Bar's manufacturing prowess being implemented as well at this new manufacturing facility off of Cato Road. Will the million mile battery chemistry be worked into some of these new technologies, patents, and form factors that we've heard about recently? possibly, but again, I think it's going to be at low volume and in line with what Elon mentioned today. Why is all of this significant to wrap this up and put a nice bow on it? I think that one of the main takeaways, yes, is going to be better energy density, better longevity of battery, but I think that the real takeaway from this event is going to be the cost of manufacturing battery cells. I'm expecting some really fantastic news around significant cost reductions, which not only benefit Tesla, but they benefit the entire auto industry. And then the last thing that I'll mention that no one has talked about, and I'm super surprised, is some announcements around going into the mining business, acquiring some mining companies, acquiring some companies that mine the important raw materials that go into their battery packs. For example, lithium, nickel, and cobalt. I don't know which one of these Tesla will make an announcement about, but I've just got some strange spidey senses going on that we will see some announcements around Tesla making some acquisitions to secure long-term raw materials for their battery cell production. Could Tesla make an announcement that they're acquiring a company like Piedmont Lithium, which is a sponsor of this channel? Quite possibly. There are some really interesting things that I've been noticing around Piedmont in particular. So we'll have to stay tuned. And of course, we'll probably learn a lot more about any acquisitions of raw material companies, mining companies uh, in the next 24 hours. I also wanna tease one more thing that you can look forward to after battery day is over. Ravi Kampaya, which I've had on my channel a couple of times. He's a PhD scholar in nano battery technology. He and I will be diving into battery day, its implications, and talking about our thoughts post 
battery day announcement. So make sure you're subscribed to my channel so you don't miss that video that I'll publish later on tomorrow night after we've had a chance to digest everything and talk about our analysis. It's guaranteed to be super insightful and because Ravi is in the industry and has worked in the industry, you will enjoy his technical analysis of battery day. All right, that wraps up this video. This has been such a fun journey following Tesla, their road to battery day over the last couple of years. And a huge shout out to all of my Tesla content creators who've covered this a little bit at nauseum, but in detail for all of you to enjoy. Give them some love. Go watch their videos again. And please, if you want a more technical deep dive on battery day and some of these recent leaks and breakthroughs, go check out the limiting factors video. I think you'll really, really enjoy the in-depth analysis. This is Sean from All Things EV. Thank you so much for tuning in. I really appreciate your attention. I'll catch everyone on the next video.